Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Kevin Eknes and today we're going to keep chatting about phrasing for guitar and more specifically about the vibrato technique. You're probably already familiar with what vibrato technique is, but today we're going to discuss a couple of different types and options that you have for vibrato, but also a few common traps that's very easily to fall into. Make sure that you check out the first part of the phrasing essentials, it's going to be up here, where we're talking about accenting offbeats in order to create a forward motion in your guitar lines, whether you're going ascending or descending. So vibrato is a very helpful tool in order to keep expressing yourself. What happens is whatever pitch that you play, you bump it either up or down in pitch, but what's important within that is to always return to the initial foundational pitch. Otherwise, it's gonna sound like the pitch is shifted and is gonna be out of tune, whether it's sharp or flat. For instance, here I always return to the D note. And if I didn't return to the initial pitch, it could sound like. And then at that point, the note sounds like it's here, instead of here. Another trap that's very easy to fall into is not properly establishing the actual pitch before you start using the vibrato and the listener does not know what pitch you had in mind of playing and so it could sound out of tune or it could sound just very like strangly. For instance, if I add a vibrato before adding the pitch, it just sounds out of tune and very strangly. Try this. And if it's hard for you to kind of keep control of that or if you feel like the lines are lacking something, uh, a cool vibrato thing to do is to just give it a little bump in order to create that depth. Now, I'm super curious, what guitar player has the best vibrato in your opinion? Let me know in the comments field below. My favorite is Yngwie Malmsteen. His vibrato is just so insanely aggressive and it's just expressing this super mean and furious attitude that's just badass. There's a lot of different vibratos to choose from. Let's dig into some of the most common ones. So the first kind of vibrato to check out is the pull down, where your wrist will actually move the pitch and it's more in kind of a rotating motion. And the thumb is slightly higher on the back of your neck. And it gives a lot of power and just because of how the ergonomics of the guitar is, doing this kind of vibrato on the B string is a little bit unnatural. And obviously the high E string, it'll fret out. Uh, the opposite of that is the pull up. Uh, which is just the opposite. It's still the rotating um, movement of the wrist. A little bit unnatural on the lower strings, but the higher strings like the B and the E, it's wonderful. Now moving along, uh, we have the rotating vibrato, which requires quite a bit of pressure uh, from the front side of the fretboard. Almost sounds like you're going up and down in pitch, but what I think, uh, it's more of a visual effect. And also, it's an effect that's kind of, or a vibrato that's easy to control because just the nature of it uh, aims for kind of a slower paced vibrato. It's beautiful. Now we also have the violin kind that's kind of horizontal. So you'll pick a note and then your wrist will kind of go back and forth, rock back and forth. You can even let go uh, of your thumb on the back of your neck if you want. And it requires more pressure than you would think from the front of the fretboard, kind of similar to the rotating. But what's cool about this kind of vibrato is that you could add it to uh, chords.
This is another one of those vibratos that's just great to kind of just end kind of a phrase or a lick on because you don't have the same kind of tendencies to get out of control or out of hand and just be kind of too much. Like it's very easy to do a faster lick. And if you end with more of a subtle horizontal vibrato, It becomes kind of, it's easier to do a more kind of finesse sort of a sound. The thumbs position is going to change depending on what strings you're playing on. To just get that sort of power that you need in order to just do the actual vibrato. Now you should never strain, I can't stress that enough. Never strain because that can cause you an injury, but you should apply a little bit more pressure than you would with your normal playing. Generally speaking, imagine a claw here and just depending on what strings you're playing on, it should move along with that. So the lower strings and as you get higher, basically, in order to get that certain power. And as far as the horizontal vibrato goes, uh, it's a little bit different because the thumb will basically be here and it'll be basically parallel to the fingers on top of your fretboard and so you can see, depending on what strings you're playing, it'll move like that. On certain chords, you may even just let go of the thumb. And at that point, you can push, not with your elbow, but like the side of your, your arm here in order to kind of go back and forth, almost like that. But it all happens. Aside from all the different types of vibrato that we have, it's also important to practice the actual pitch range of the vibrato. Some of the types may call for a certain range, but it's important to kind of just explore how far you can do it. How wide can you make a vibrato? How subtle can you make the exact same vibrato? And have control over that and just master just that different range. Another great thing to do with vibrato is to control it to the point where you could use an actual subdivision for the tempo. It's very hard to actually objectively assess how your vibrato is, so I highly recommend you to record yourself, listen back, how is your vibrato as opposed to your ideal vibrato. How does your favorite guitarist vibrato sound like? Are you close to that somehow? And without anything else to say, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. See ya.